So we're going to break down your throwing on the left compared to NFL quarterback John Wolford on the right. We'll try to pull out some differences that we see biomechanically, as well as the areas that are most commonly flawed in order to have easy cues to get your quarterbacking better. I think to start out right here on the last step of your drop, we start to notice a few things that are very common with younger quarterbacks, and that's posturing, right? Elbows are out wide, arms are out wide a little bit, and the body is creating this anterior lean angle. So we're kind of falling forward with that front shoulder pointing down. This usually causes the quarterback to have to rock their weight back to get their co- their shoulders back level, right? So shoulders down, hit your back leg, have to pull those shoulders back up. Where if you see John on that last step, he's very neutral over top of himself, right? Pelvis, hip, torso neutral. Back leg is sitting right underneath himself. And as he gets towards that back step, that back foot's just put directly under his base of support. You look at the back step, look at how much more transition there is. And then the back foot is placed behind that T line a good deal, right? So you have to kind of sink from that initial start. There's a big jump into the back leg, right? So you're covering lots of ground. Where John's transition goes from last step is there. And then the future first step of you see John's transition just from here to here, here to here. And so that's the first real transition is making sure that you're keeping the shoulders at a nice neutral line. And from that last step of that left foot into the right foot, there's more of a placement directly under your center of mass, which would be your pelvis. Too much translation backwards causes that big hop backwards and having to sit deep into that back leg, eventually pushing yourself back forward. And that's the next step of this video that we're going to get into. So once you get a lot of weight deep into that squatty back leg, we're going to notice that you create something called early extension. So if we get into John's back leg here, he stays back leg directly under his base of support. There maintains flexion in this back leg. So that back knee maintains some flexion and this back hip is loaded in a coil. Where here that back knee is bowing out in some capacity and the leg is relatively straight. We call that posting. We want to prevent posting of that back leg as we get ready to throw. Here his torso is sitting back into this back hip. Here the torso is leaning forward over this front side. This is going to eventually create lack of hip shoulder separation and a pushing motion with your arm. And so we're going to watch some of that take place, right? So the weight shifts forward. We create early extension. So that back leg's just frozen. That front leg's already open. And now your pelvis, torso, and arm are all just going to start rotating at the same time, right? We don't see any separation here. There's just the same block pelvis that starts moving forward. And then that arm pushes the ball. And that will eventually kill total velocity towards the end because the torque between your pelvis and torso and that sling or tension is what can create high throwing velocity. So if we get back to the same point, this is kind of where we look at at high 9090. And then you see John here in which you see this ripple across his shirt. His pelvis is starting first. His torso staying nice and calm as his arm starts to reach for a position. And then he starts to create this rotation. Hips are starting to fire forward. Torso is still facing us. And eventually it's going to go hip, shoulder, and we get to arm layback. That's the last main point we're going to talk about here. What happens at lead leg block and maximum external rotation or MER? Arm positioning is great for you. You want this elbow to be climbing right around the chin angle. Same as John, elbow climbing right around the chin angle. You want it staying at the center of your shoulder. And we want to see more than 90 degrees of layback. Yours looks good there. Probably around 110 or 120 degrees of layback um, on that image there. When we look at John, he's in the same position. We got a lot of layback there. We got the elbow sitting forward. Uh, torso looks uh, looks like it goes, has good forward lean over that back leg. On your side, we see this little bit of this bowing side, right? And some of that just that lead leg block. Because you got your waist so far out in front, 
you see how his hip is still sitting back and his front leg is bracing him, where your hip's sitting forward on top of your front leg because you lost all of the power from the ground here where he's still sitting into that rear side. And so those are the three main factors. Factor one is on this last step of your drop, improving the positioning or how much tempo we get squatting into that back leg and how forward your lean is here. Number two, after you get to forward lean, preventing that big straight leg step, right? So big straight leg step, all of your weight goes to your front. You see this big forward lean angle. And then number three is improving this hip shoulder separation to where you're not flying this chest open and opening your chest. For a view against John, you'll see right foot is placed directly under his base of support, maintaining that waist neutral and weight back. And then as front foot starts to transition and strike, he keeps a distance between his leg where his torso could stay vertical and this front leg is bracing back against his body so that he could get this pelvis going first. You see that little shirt ripple. So pelvis going first, chest facing us, and then eventually that arm delivering through at the strike point where we get ball, elbow, knee, front arm. And that's how we deliver high velocity balls. So three easy things to work on. Three simple commands and cues. A lot of it is that initial posturing that's getting you to kind of just flick with your arm in order to throw the ball instead of driving from this back hip, right? So you see how everything happens out in front of this front leg and you're just pushing with your arm. We want to be driving with that back hip.